Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa man tamassaka bi sunnatihi ila yawmiddin thumma amma ba'd alhamdulillah ala ni'mati al-islam wa sunnah all praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in his noble book يا ايها الذين امنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون Allah Ta'ala he says what translated means oh you who believe fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those who came before you in order that you attain piety نعم Allah Azza wa Jal he goes on to say in the next verse ايام معدودات for a fixed number of days. And bithillahi ta'ala, perhaps in another uh, reminder, we could reflect on this portion of the ayah. Nonetheless, Allah ta'ala, he goes on to say, فَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ And whoever from amongst you is sick or they are upon a journey, then they will make those days up later. Then they will make those days up later. And then Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ طَعَامُ الْمِسْكِينَ And upon those who have the ability to fast, but they don't, because in the beginning, fasting, before it was made an obligation, a person was given a choice. Either they will fast, or for every day that they did not fast, they will, they will feed a poor, a poor person. Now, this was in the beginning of the affair. Where they had, where the Muslims had this option, but once the fasting in the month of Ramadan had been made obligatory, and it was made obligatory, and the proof of that can be seen in the next following ayah, where Allah Taala He says, "For man shahida minkum al-shahra faliyasumah." So whoever from amongst you sees the month, meaning they they witness the the the, the hilal for the month of Ramadan, the new moon for the month of Ramadan, then they have to fast it. This verse made it obligatory. In any event, what remained was that for those who were sick, na'am, for those who were sick with the sickness, that there is no anticipation that they will be cured of, and uh, yani, um, a sickness that if they were to fast, it will make it more, yani, it would increase their sickness and it will be more damaging upon them, so on and so forth, then they will take the ruling that they will have to feed a person for each day. Now, the purpose of this particular clip is not to get into the fiqh of fasting now per se but we want to look at the person who is sick those who do not have the ability to fast are they rewarded with the same reward like the person who has the ability to fast this is the question the person who is sick with the sickness that there is no anticipation that they'll become better for so therefore they have a, a legitimate uh, excuse where they do not have to fast. So it's upon them to feed a person for every day that they don't fast. So that'll be 29 or 30 people that they will feed. Do they get the same reward as those who fast? This is the question. Are they eligible for the same reward of those who do fast? Naam. Let us reflect on this. Sheikh Ben Baz was asked this question. Su'ira Sheikh Ben Baz, rahimahullahu ta'ala. هل المفطر في رمضان لعذر شرعي ككبر السن مثلا ككبر السن مثلا ويقوم بالإطعام هل له مثل أجر الصائم So the question that they ask is the one who breaks their fast in Ramadan meaning the one who doesn't fast inside of Ramadan due to a legislative excuse due to a legislated excuse, like, for example, being old in age. Naam? Because as far as the uh, those who would feed a person to to for every day that they didn't fast, this was a ruling that is consistent and remains for those who are old and don't have the ability, for those who are sick with a sickness that they don't anticipate that they'll be cured from, so on and so forth. So they, they will feed. Naam? So being elderly, old in age, at a, at a point where fasting could have a negative impact upon your overall health, then they are allowed to feed a person for each day. So do they, do they get the same reward? Now, this is a question I know a lot of people ask. Because sometimes 
you'll hear the you hear the ayat and you'll hear the the ahadith about fasting you 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 you'll see the the text from the yani from the Quran and the sunnah about the reward and the superiority of the, of the fasters and those who fast and what they are going to get thus forth and so on so a person who is sick or elderly and don't have the ability to fast they may feel as if they are missing out i'm i'm missing out i'm not going to be able to get this reward because i'm not able to fast so thus the question that they ask this question is the one who has a legislative excuse and they feed people do they still get the same reward as those who fast sheikh bin baz rahimahullah ta'ala he said yurja lahu dhalik he said i hope so i hope that is such that that, that is the case naam he says li'annahu ma'dhur shar'an he said because this is a person who has a legislative excuse this is an individual who they they have an excuse they excuse and they have a legislative excuse that gives them the uh, yani that that allows them not to fast naam they have a legislative excuse that allows them not to fast so do they get the same reward the sheikh he mentions and this is very important he says wal ma'dhur lahu hukm as-sa'im he said the one who is excused the one who has a legislated excuse then they get the same reward as the one who is fasting they get the same reward as the faster naam this is because what they have a legislated excuse that grants them the allowance to feed people instead of fasting why because they don't have the ability now that makes sense but listen look 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 at the istidlal look at the proof that the sheikh he mentions he said يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said من مرض أو سافر كتب الله له ما كان يعمل وهو صحيح مقيم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that whoever is sick or they are upon a journey, because you know when you're sick this throws off you know what you will regularly do because of the sickness, right? Uh, likewise, when you're traveling on a on a journey, it throws you off what you may regularly do. So your 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 schedule changes, your eating habits change. You know everything changes, right? Due to due to that um, fast, uh, due to that travel. Excuse me. <clears throat> Whoever is sick, or they are traveling, Allah writes for them. Allah writes for them. Whatever they used to do from actions. when they were healthy and when they were a resident so if a person is prevented from doing acts of worship that they were consisted upon doing due to sickness or due to traveling then at that point they get the same reward at what they used to do the same reward of what they used to do naam this bila shak wa bila raib is a tremendous bounty this should make the muslims extremely happy those who are in this situation where they are not able to fast is that they will still get the reward of the fasting person as the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said whoever is sick or they are upon a journey and Allah will write for them what they used to do when they were healthy and when they were a resident so now i want you to reflect on this and i want you to listen what sheikh bin baz he mentions rahimahullah ta'ala he says for kibr fi sin he says so being old in age naam being old in age uh for kibr of sin alladhi ajaza an as-siyam lahu hukm as-sa'imun aw hukm as-sa'imin he said that whoever they have reached a old age of which they are incapable to fast due to their advanced age then they get the reward they're in the same ruling of those who fast naam fi hukm as-sa'imin then the same category as those who who do fast why li'annahu ma'dhur because this one he is excused he's excused walaw al-ajz la sama and if it wasn't for the fact that they have reached an age that they are incapable right of fasting or 
because they were sick, they were incapable of fasting. If that was not the case, if that cause or that reason gets removed, then what? Then they would they would have fast. Then they will fast. Now the only reason they're not fasting is because they have a sickness that they cannot fast with it, or because they are old in age and can no longer handle fasting. They can no they no longer have the ability to fast. Now for who am I So therefore this person he he has an excuse. He's excused. He's excused from fasting. Now, so now go back. Because that's, that's what I say. I want you to look and see that he, the, the proof the Sheikh he mentioned and how uh, uh, appropriate it is, right? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Ta'ala will write the same reward for a person of what they used to do when, when they get sick and when they're traveling. So what is it that prevented a person from doing those righteous good deeds that they did aforetime? Is what? Is that they were sick or is that they were on a journey? Because they were sick or on a journey, this is what threw them off what they usually do. But if that was not the case, then what? Then they will go back to what they usually usually do. So likewise, when you see here, this situation, this concept is the same and it is applicable for the person who has become sick with a sickness that can't be cured or because they have reached an age, an advanced age where they can no longer fast. Now, I'm, we understand that the thing that prevents them is what is the advanced age and is the sickness. But if the advanced age wasn't there, they would fast. Why? When they were young, they used to fast. But the sickness, with the person that becomes sick with a sickness that they, 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 they can't fast with it, the, what prevents them from fasting is the sickness. If the sickness wasn't there, then they would fast. Because previously, before they got diagnosed with this sickness or before they you know, felt the effects of the sickness and, and had this sickness, they used to do what? They used to fast. Now, so they still get the reward and they're written from those who fast. Now, the Shaykh, he mentions, he says, He says, so this person is excused and it is upon them to feed people, feed poor people for every day or feed the needy for every day. Now, so a person who doesn't have the ability to fast because they're old in age or because they're sick, they're sick with a sickness that does not allow them to fast, ma'am, or because the woman, she is pregnant, ma'am, she is pregnant or breastfeeding, right, and, and, and the like, then, and there's a difference of opinion upon that last one, but the strongest opinion in my view is that they are to feed a person for each day and they don't have to make up the days. And, and the like, they should feed a person. But now the question comes, what if a person is sick, or they are old, and at the same time, they are poor. They don't have the ability to feed people. But in fact, that they will be from those who will receive food, right? What is their case? The Sheikh, he says, ولا إطعام عليه لقول الله سبحانه وتعالى فاتقوا الله ما استطعتم نعم he said that in the person who they don't have the ability to feed people because they are poor they can't feed people and at the same time they're sick or they're old in age so they cannot fast if they don't have the ability to feed people then the sheikh he says then there is nothing upon them they don't have to fast and they don't have to feed people. Why? According to the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear Allah to the best of your ability. Fear Allah to the best of your ability. So they don't have to do anything. They don't have to feed people. And they don't have to make up the days. This is a ni'mah bila shak wa bila raib. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants for us ease. He does not want for us any type of difficulty in any which way, shape, or form. This shows you the, yani, the superiority of the deen of al-Islam. The superiority of the deen of al-Islam. It shows you how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He treats His slaves with easiness. He makes things easy upon us. When a person reflects over the like of this, you when you truly understand it, the only proper response 
is to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tremendously. To thank Allah jalla wa ala tremendously for blessing you and guiding you to the deen of al-Islam from legislating upon you the likes of these rules wherein your best interest is in mind. Ya yeah, subhanallah, this is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam, this is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with nilahi ta'ala, there is perhaps more that could be said on this particular point, but the thing I wanted to focus in on is that for those who are old in age or for those who they are sick with the sickness that they don't have the ability to fast, then glad tidings you are written among those who fast. Bithnilahi ta'ala. Naam. But you have to feed for every day a poor person. Naam. But if you don't have the ability because you are poor yourself and you can't afford to feed a poor person for every day that you did not fast, then glad tidings is not upon you to do anything. Because Allah Ta'ala, he said, fear Allah to the best of your ability. And the best of your ability, you're, you're, even at that, you're not, you, you cannot uh, feed people. So it's upon you to do what? Nothing. And you still get the reward. And you still get written amongst those who uh, fast. Bithnilahi Ta'ala. This is a tremendous bounty and a glad tiding. Naam. Bithnilahi Ta'ala. Illa liqa. Until next time. Estodi'akumullah. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته